Fallout 4 just had one of its best weeks for modding ever. August 2023 could legitimately end up being an all-time peak for Fallout 4 mods. This largely due to some of the DLC-sized quest and overhaul mods that just recently dropped for Fallout 4. And in this video, we're going to be looking at some major new quest mods, but also some game-altering mods that I think are perfect for one final new playthrough before Starfield eventually comes out. But even with these mods, you unfortunately still cannot play Fallout 4 on the go. But thankfully, you can play today's video sponsor, Pocket champs totally for free on both iOS and Android. In Pocket Champs, you'll race against other players to become champion, but you can't just show up on race day and expect to win. You'll have to coach your own champ to unlock its full potential. And there are even all kinds of unique gadgets to choose before each race. You might find someone fly past you with a jetpack, but you'll catch up later on in your own boat. And which training and gadgets you choose are core to your success here. But preparation is only going to get you so far, and once the race begins, you're gonna have to sit back and watch your champ race. Okay, alright, we're off to a good- Oh, no, we're killing it! Right off the bat- Oh, oh, yeah, I think here's where we're gonna run into problems. Uh, I'm still in first, though, so strong start. Super strong start. Alright, maybe we got this. Yep, no, we're good. Golden. Didn't even have to stress. And Pocket Champs is truly that perfect game to pick up when you're on the go. Sometimes you'll just get in a couple of races, while other times an hour will fly by as you're playing. And trust me, you're gonna start to get hot and sweaty as some of these races can get truly intense. But it gets even better. You can support this channel and download Pocket Champs now, and you'll even get a special bonus starter pack of 1100 gems. Just click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to download the game, and the gems will be automatically added to your account on September 4th. But act fast, as this reward is worth $9.99, and is only available until September 3rd. The first mod we really need to take a look at though is Wars. If you're a longtime fan of this channel, you probably remember this one as I've been covering this as an upcoming mod since about 2016. And this past week, this monumental project has finally released for all of us. Wars, otherwise known as the Weapon Addition and Replacement Suite, will implement a ton of new weapons into Fallout 4, but also provide itself as a major combat overhaul for the game. Sort of the bat, this is unlike other weapon mods in that it is actually going to be replacing a ton of the original weapons in Fallout 4. Shortly after release, many found Fallout 4's weapon selection to be pretty disappointing. So now, instead of this monstrosity of an assault rifle, you're going to have a proper AR in its place. But this isn't just for you. It's not like you just choose to use this new AR. No, all of the assault rifles throughout the entirety of the Commonwealth will now be replaced with this AR. And as you could imagine, this will apply to a ton of weapons all throughout Fallout 4. Inside of 10mm pistols, you're going to have things like Glocks. In place of combat rifles, you're now going to be using Mini 14s. So one of the major parts about this overhaul is you're going to find a ton of new weapons across the game, both on you, but also being used by other NPCs. The unique part being that it's not just adding new weapons into the level list, but also replacing the old weapons that were there previously. Although this isn't going to impact every single weapon in the game, many of the laser weapons and just some of the weapons that felt particularly Fallout are left alone with this one. But this mod is giant and also adds in a ton of totally new weapons that are going to occupy the level list not as replacers, but completely new additions. So it's partly just replacing the old, but also a lot of just adding completely new things into the game. And when it comes to some of the new weapon mods, as well as the replacer weapon mods, these are going to have a full suite of customizability options and mods to attach to them, including some very fitting and over-the-top Fallout options. It's really trying to make the game a bit more like Fallout New Vegas, not remove the Fallout entirely. But one of the other really cool parts about this mod is it also just overhauls some of the non-replaced vanilla weapons. The Radium Rifle now has a non-Radium variant that is just really a normal rifle if you don't want the radiation aspect. A variety of the weapons in the game will now be properly right-hand fire instead of the typical left-hand fire, and even the laser musket is now a recharger weapon with no ammo requirement. So as you can see, this is going to be a near comprehensive overhaul to just the weapon offerings in Fallout 4. You can basically just use this mod as a giant weapon pack if you want to. I'm not showing you every new weapon it adds in because there's simply too many to show. But in many ways, the new weapons implemented by this mod are only a small part of it. As it also implements a ton of new weapon mechanics and combat features that are completely game-changing. Right off the bat, NPC health is going to be normalized now. Most humans will have similar amounts of HP. It's not like there's going to be one person who's a complete bullet sponge, but then the person next to them isn't. Most NPCs in the same category will have similar amounts of HP, and overall it's going to implement some deadlier combat into the Commonwealth. Both you and NPCs will die a bit quicker with this mod installed. But also, ammo is a huge part of this mod. Magazines are now a real part of Fallout 4. As you reload, you will actually drop a magazine on the ground and then use an additional one from your inventory. By default, you're going to use your largest mag first. So here I start with a 40 round mag, but after I deplete and drop that, I'm back down to 10 round mags as that's all I have left. 
And if you run out of magazines completely, you're just going to be loading individual bullets one at a time. And this is a very real reloading mechanic. If you have a few shots left in your magazine and you drop it, you're going to literally drop those bullets on the ground. You'll lose them. Although you of course do have the option to pick them up. And that is one of the big change ups with this mod. Magazines are literally dropped. So after a fight or even in the middle of a fight, you can walk around and pick up each of these magazines along with some of these shell casings in them. And you're going to want to do this because you're going to want those magazines for future battles, especially high capacity ones. And it creates a pretty interesting dynamic in Fallout 4 where high capacity magazines are genuinely useful and a commodity now. Although I imagine many of you are like, wow, that seems like it get really tedious to look around for all of these mags. But one, there are perks that make finding them a bit easier. And two, if you don't even like this feature, you could turn it off entirely. And what makes this a bit more balanced is enemies are also going to drop magazines of different sizes. So over time, as you fight enemies of a certain type, you could pretty easily stockpile a certain type of mag and really stick to that. But at the same time, a lack of magazine does become a real gameplay benefit for some weapons. Shell loaded weapons like a double barrel shotgun don't have mags and just makes things simpler. You don't have to worry about that mechanic at all. It does have a longer reload time, but at the same time, not having to worry about the extra carry weight for magazines or constantly having to pick them up is a huge asset now. And this mod will take ammo even further by implementing a variety of new ammo types and on the fly ammo switching just like in New Vegas. I'm not going to fully dive into the system, but there are all types of different rounds that you can get, each having their own pros and cons associated with them, and many being familiar from past Fallout games or even just other video games out there. And although this magazine mechanic can sound tedious, it does have a really interesting impact on gameplay, and that it almost encourages you to stick to certain weapon systems organically. So early on, when basically every enemy is using a pipe weapon, you may find yourself also leaning into those, because you'll just be constantly finding box magazines for pipe weapons, so of course you're going to Want to use those more. You'll adopt different weapon ecosystems over the course of the game and they'll kind of grow into these as time goes on and you get better equipment but also tougher enemies. And with some of the weapon ecosystems they even have real world cross uses like the Mini 14 and the AR use the exact same type of magazine and even share some of the attachment types. So several components are actually interchangeable with these systems but the mag crossover is a huge part of this. And there are tons of other features with this mod, it really does have an insane degree of depth. As you can see on screen, weapon condition is a factor now. As you use a weapon, the condition will degrade gradually, and if you neglect it too much, you can actually permanently damage weapons. Thankfully, it's not going to be using the same mechanics as New Vegas, it's actually incredibly simple to clean weapons now. You could even do this on the fly if you want to. Recoil and accuracy are also totally reworked. Now many of the weapon perks will actually boost those stats for your weapons, making you more accurate with them and be able to handle the recoil a bit more as opposed to just giving you magically more damage. And there's a ton more, including a full-fledged ammo processing component that I'm not even diving into because it would just dramatically extend the length of this video. In addition to some of the features we talked about here, Wars has some broader gameplay impacting features, like weapons in your hands, not actually taking up any carry weight, or even weapons having strength requirements tied to them depending on how you modify them. But Wars was released with a sister mod that I highly encourage you to use with it, known as Peace aka Project Extend and Change Everything, which is also going to dramatically expand on many mechanics in Fallout 4. Carry weight is completely overhauled. Now, carry weight is a multiplier of your strength against what items you're wearing. So being strong is really only half the equation now. Your strength value will be a multiplier against things like backpacks or armor with pockets. You're going to actually have to have room for your items, and NPCs will also almost always be wearing backpacks of some kind now. Your strength will multiply against this to increase your carrying capacity even further. So overall with this mod, you won't be able to carry quite as much, but there are mechanics to counteract that, such as what armor you're wearing will actually have a reduced weight on your body overall, but also things like some higher tier and heavier armors requiring a certain amount of strength now as well. But most relevant, power armor is now insane. You get a set of power armor, equip it with a couple of pouches or even a backpack, and you're going to have hundreds of additional pounds of carrying capacity compared to your typical armor, making power armor way stronger from a utility perspective with peace. Both wars and peace are meant to be played on survival, so there's a ton of mechanics around that as well. Now doing things actually takes time. Craft an item and you'll notice time passes, but there are also portable camping supplies and some handy tools for purifying water and staying healthy in the game. Butchery has been completely reworked, so now you'll actually have to have a sharp object on you and go through a butchering process on a creature. But also things like meat can spoil, so you have to build something like a fridge to preserve it, as well as there's going to be a ton of new 
healing mechanics. Hydra is back from Fall at New Vegas for your limbs, but also things like medical braces to heal broken limbs over time a bit more slowly. And once again, there's a ton more. Both Wars and Peace are gigantic mods, together acting like a true hardcore overhaul for Fallout 4 with a ton of immersive systems added, but also actually re-implementing a ton of features that were present in Fallout New Vegas, which I know a ton of you guys are going to love. And one of the most important parts about each of these mods is a lot of these features are very modular. Some of the more tedious stuff you can turn off and not deal with at all if you don't want to, so if you're not after a super hardcore experience, you could tweak things to be more your speed. But overall, both of these mods are absolutely tremendous and truly some of the best gameplay overhauls we've gotten in years. But two other mods that are perfect to download on top of these, especially if you're going to start a new playthrough, are NPCs use items and chemfluence. These are going to be another set of tandem mods that are going to do some pretty interesting things with AI in Fallout 4. NPCs use items will make it so enemy NPCs will not properly use chems in Fallout 4. So things like stim packs will be used far more often, but NPCs will also have access to a much larger variety of chems. You'll see them using things like Mentats, Vodka, or even some stronger chems like Psychojet or Excel. So now enemies, and really most notably Raiders, will have some boosted up abilities from time to time, and this will come full circle with the mod Chemfluence which will impact enemy AI depending on which weapons they have equipped or what chem they just used. And this has a really massive impact on gameplay. On the weapon front, things are pretty interesting. Melee weapon users will launch full-on chem-fueled assaults and sprint toward you. If they did take a chem, their AI will be pushed forward even further, so you'll find them being even more reckless as they attack. But even when it comes to some of the AI overhauls, there's actually variance in between. Some of these melee attackers will just sprint at you swinging away, while some others will actually prefer to flank you or even block some of your initial attacks and then launch a counter offensive. On the flip side, you're going to find snipers or users of ranged weapons really stick to their cover and safe spot a lot more. They're not going to be moving around or running out of cover nearly as often now. Instead, a lot of times you'll find snipers trying to pin you down and they really stay still and want you to stay still or wait till you move. And a lot of times as you're pinned down, other raiders will sprint up and attack you as well. And this too has variants. Some ranged attackers will be precise with their shots while others are going to fire more rapidly but with far less accuracy. And you'll even get the occasional shotgunner. And yeah, with this mod, shotgunners are far more aggressive and far more deadly, especially if you're using wars. Most shotgunners aren't going to really bother with mid-range. They're really going to use their chems and sprint up to try and get point blank to you and deal as much damage as possible. And the chems add in a really nice x-factor to all of this. You'll see chemmed up enemies moving towards you at never before seen speeds. Or even just find sometimes those bizarrely accurate mini nukes were actually fueled by mental hats all along. Overall, it's a super fun mod that adds in a few healthy change-ups to combat encounters, but I think in a really dynamic way. It definitely buffs up enemies in Fallout 4, but it also just makes combat a bit more interesting and more dynamic. But if you're going to download all of these mods and you're looking for some new ways to actually experience them in game, I highly recommend you also check out Brothers in Arms. This mod just had its chapter 2 release, now creating a two-part long DLC-sized quest experience. I don't want to spoil too much or even share that much about this, just give it my recommendation overall. How this will work is you're going to interact with a new faction that closely hooks into the Brotherhood of Steel storyline. And in this, you'll even experience the return of Lion Loyalists to the Commonwealth in an epic new adventure. Overall, it's a really fun one, and I think downloading all all of the mods in this video and just jumping face first into a new playthrough is a really cool way to kind of have a swan song to Fallout 4. And thanks again to Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video. Download it for free using my link down below or the QR code on screen to get an early boost in game. But if you're somehow still not satiated, check out this video where I talk about the best Fallout 4 mod ever that just dropped a couple of weeks ago.